Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and I have a sample today from our friend's mine operator down in California. I was down there a couple months ago, went and did some mining with them, and saw their mill site. I've brought two buckets back up here to Washington. I'm going to run them through my equipment behind me and see how much gold I can recover and compare it to what they got. But before we run the stuff through my equipment, I'll show you where I got the ore and I'll show you how it ran through their mill site. I'm down in the southwest. I got Dan Hurd with me. I was invited down by a YouTube channel called Mine Operator. So we're going to do some gold mining and do a little gold exploration today. Here's our first look at their portal. I got a nice little head frame they got here and a skip bucket that comes up over the top and will dump into their dump trailer. Looking down the portal here, we're going down to the 45 foot level today. And the hope is to bring up about a one ton sample, get it in the dump trailer and take it back to the mill. All right, so these are the guys that invited me down. This is Mine Operator. They have their own YouTube channel. Check them out, they do some awesome stuff. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below, so be sure to click on that. But I wanted to do a little introduction here. This is Chad, Harry, Ron, and Greg. And I'm gonna let uh, maybe Chad and Harry tell a little bit about their operation and their mine and um, how you guys got here. Cool, thanks Jason. We're glad you're here. We uh, started out here about seven years ago and we started prospecting like like most of you do and we were using the sore thumb crusher and we're panning we're finding gold so we had sampled inside the mine and started seeing values throughout um, just like many hard rock mines they were shut down during world war ii so we know there's gold in still some of these mines so we had claimed it up and have been continuing to sample ever since very cool. All right, guys, well, what is our plan today? What's our goal? What are, what's our mission? Now we want to go in this mine. We want to take a bulk sample of an area where we recently had a channel sample assayed, and we want to confirm how close our milling equipment can get in its recovery compared to that assay. So we're going to be using some pneumatic tools uh, to pull a sample. We're going to use our dump skip, and we're going to dump right into our dump trailer. We try to get one ton. That's our goal today. One ton today. All right. That's a lot of shoveling. <laughs> Get after him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, I, I'm not expecting him to work. He's going to be watching us. <laughs> I don't work on video. Yeah, that's, that's me. So. Somebody's cool. got to be the foreman. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Who's in charge here? Yeah. All right. Well, let's go do it. Let's That's see what we can right. get today. Thank you. All right. So the mineralization changes throughout the vein. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes you might be chasing it on the hanging wall, sometimes on the foot wall where we will be pulling a sample and it'll be on the foot wall. <laughs> and this is the vein here on the wall. Looks like it pinches and swells. Mostly pretty broken up quartz, huh? Yes. You can see some copper on the side. Copper staining a little bit. Yeah. Going down the hole here. What's this about? 55 degrees? Yes. 55 on the money. That's a nice. Uh, that's a nice dip. The muckle run in the stope, but it's not vertical, so you're not climbing straight up and down. Here's a little look in some of the old stopes they did. Left some nice pillars. Okay. Not a snake check, but if any got disturbed, you want to head back down. Yeah, there's some original stalls and stalls still. Yeah, they look great. Mine are all rotten. Mine get wet. Yeah. They only last about 10 years. What? Things in the Washington State get wet? Yeah, no kidding, about? right? And rot away? Yeah, when did that start? Yeah. Yeah, you don't tan your rust up there. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so here's our level i think this is the level we're going to be working on this is our first level okay you call this the 45 this is 45 yes the 45 level wow look at this this is this is an impressive operation you got here thanks you guys have spent a lot of time and work down here let me tell you so when we first uh came in this level yeah uh, material from the upper stoke literally was up to where my chin is oh wow we were crawling on our bellies so we we mucked out um 
oh, probably a good 15 tons. Wow. From this location. And, and, and it was diluted material. So we had hanging wall and foot wall material in there, but we averaged uh, from about a 10th ounce on some run sample runs to upwards of a half ounce on separate runs. Uh, we tried a variety of things from just screening and, and milling our screen material and to crushing and milling everything and see, see how well it did. But all the gold's pretty fine. Gotcha. So all, all the muck on the floor that you mucked out with ore yeah, had, yes. had gold yeah, in it. We ran it too. Nice. Yeah, we ran it. So off, off to your right, you can see one of our, our bulk sample runs here. Okay. And we had gotten it was a, around an eighth ounce to the ton. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry. It was around one fifth of an ounce to the ton. A fifth, so so uh, 0.2 ounces per ton. You can see some of these original stalls are still here, but they were burnt. Oh, they did burn. Look at that. Yeah. There was a fire. Oh, hey, things are a lot brighter when I take my sunglasses off. <laughs> hey, you can see. I know, right? And if you get the dust off them, it's even better. <laughs> Let's see if I can change my head. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There we are. You can see the vein material. Yeah. And so probably the fire has changed the coloration of the vein up there. But yeah. what what do you look for as far as good high grade stuff or the better stuff? Is there some sort of mineralization you look for? Yeah, you'll you'll see right up here after we get through this burn section. Okay. We had um, we dropped some material here. You'll notice, you know, we have a lot of reds and pinks, so some iron uh, oxidizing out. <coughs> This was lower grade materials. So Jason's over there Surprisingly, it's pretty hard packed, even though it's, it's still really soft. But when we get into purple material and sugar quartz, we call it sugar quartz because it just falls apart. And I'll show you some coming up. That's usually where we have better gold. We had one assay up to one ounce per ton in here. Okay. And it was in the, the purple um, quartz material. Okay. So we'll go take a look at that. And your, your hanging wall and your foot wall look pretty well defined. Yes, you can yeah. see a good slick. Yeah, mud slick down here. Okay, yeah. And so once you hit that, that slick, that nice smooth hanging wall, that's you know you're out of the pay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. You can see the pillars they left. You can get a really good idea of what they were after. Yeah. And it, and it differs slightly from off to the left. So this area, they really liked the material. Okay. You get you get some real deep purples and orange. Timber hang there. Land side, please. Yeah, and so we have quartz monzonite as the main host rock material. Okay. We get copper staining on the hanging wall side. And in some of the workings, the grades are up as high as uh, two percent copper. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, but uh, at a different location than here. Okay, but you're you're really mostly after the gold for the pay. Yes. The copper is not necessarily a, a paying Correct. metal for you at this point. At one vein structure in the hanging wall, it is. And it's two and a half percent. And the vein's two foot wide. So okay. we're doing some tests on that to see what kind of potential there is, how big of a strike and depth. Okay. Uh, so right below, we, we have paint marks every five feet. So we have a paint mark here, and this represents the 30 foot uh, coming in, and this is a good way to sample a mine, you know, put markers down and, and channel sample or run, you know, bulk samples periodically and then sure. you can get a good average. Sure. You can see the muck here. This is what it was like oh, all, wow. all, all the way through this tunnel here, this drift. So we we moved a lot of rat poop. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a bunch of those little cactus in our hands and our knees. It'll stick on your feet and then you'll stab yourself in the butt and it's just a, a brutal You can experience. see they've been bringing branches and leaves in again. Oh man. So uh yeah, this is... It's a never-ending battle. So you'll end up continuing yeah, to muck this out. Right. Oh, yeah. Drift. Drift. You don't want to get that stuck in you anywhere. Yeah. Yikes. That's where they're moving forward to. This hurts. This, <laughs> well, this, is that some of the cactus? Yeah, don't yes. eat that. Don't eat that. Okay. Yeah. The, the vein in this mine pinches and swells, and you can see how there's alteration in the foot wall here. Uh, we've taken our channel sample from foot wall to here. We got a, a tenth ounce to the ton um, at this location here. 
and we've ran a small bulk sample and confirmed it. But we, we want to figure out if we can high grade because here you can see how soft the vein is. This is where the majority of the gold is at, it, at this location in, in the vein structure. On the foot wall, everything is, for the most part, like a, we call it sugar quartz. It literally looks like sugar. A few hard quartz pieces that come out without much effort. And then we get usually into some base metal material on the hanging wall, okay. the lighter material. So if Dan's gonna go pan a sample, he wants to get this stuff right in the foot wall. Yes, sir. Okay. If you scoop this up right now and took a pan, that would that would show some nice color. Okay. That's what I'm here for today. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's looking for We're California for. gold today. I want shiny. <laughs> First ever California gold. We get wire gold here too. Uh, we get it. We call it coarse pieces, but they're not bigger than 30 mesh. So, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're excited to see 30 mesh here. Uh, yeah. I, I understand completely. Yes. Yeah. But most of it's super fine. I would say half of our gold is smaller than 200 mesh, and the other half is above. So. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm how, trying to dig. Yeah. How do we how do we get this out of here? Okay. We'll show you that next. All right. <laughs> well, I was just informed this is a stall gauge. This is very very cool. It's essentially a way to measure how long your stalls need to be to go between the hanging and the foot wall. And, so and I got to build one of these. And the correct angle so at each end is adjustable lengthwise and angle wise at each end. Very cool. Dan is about to pull out a sample from the vein there and take it up and pan it. And so if you want to see gold right out of that spot, be sure to check out Dan's channel. He's going to have a video out as well of panning some of this stuff and this will be Dan's first ever California gold. So here's a little bit different spot of the vein. We're looking up now but this black here and then this deep purple is what do you call it? Glory. Glory hole. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is glory the material. this is the the winning stuff right here. So that is where these guys have found their high grade stuff. If only that was six feet wide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, do you have any idea, like, have you ever high graded sampled this? Is this running like six, eight ounces a ton if you just take that little bit? I, I would suspect eight because north of here at another location, um, the vein is wider and we have about um, six to eight inches of wide of that material. Okay. So we're getting assays from eight ounces to the ton. And we had one up to 334 ounces of gold. Wow. But we chalked it up to the nugget effect. Sure. And so, I mean, oh, if we can duplicate we that, that we, we would believe it. Yeah. But, you know, you get excited when you see it, but you don't don't be excited for long. Sure. So, I mean, all this this red, red, deep red stuff is the good stuff. Yeah. Matter of fact, where your finger's at, there might be a small piece. There we go. Golden, golden uh, in the face there. Good possibility. We get a, a microscope on that or a loop in this. <laughs> so in this in this mine, it's the deep purple, real rusty iron oxide stuff. Very cool. All right. Well, Dan has his bucket of rocks. Dan, what are you hoping for here? Uh, ten pounds of gold. Ten pounds of gold. Yes. <laughs> All right. It doesn't hurt. To hope. In your fifty-pound bucket. Exactly. Hope, hope well, you ten specks of gold, and I will be very happy. Yeah, and this is you. You've high graded some stuff out of the vein. Yep, all from the foot wall. So apparently, that's the high grade stuff. Cool. Uh, left the crappy material for these guys. You know? That's right. Yeah. Well, that's how, that's how we do it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So you're gonna go up and get that panned out and see what you got. Crush it down, pan it out, and see if we can get a few specks of gold. All right. Well, be sure to check out Dan's channel to see what he got. We're getting our tools down here. We got some air tools. We got some electric tools. We're going to be breaking some rock, putting it in those buckets, and then working. Oh, look at this tool he's got. In case you have a filling that needs taken care of, we can <laughs> drill it out with this. <laughs> you're, in a, you're a dentist now, too, yeah. huh? Dentist miner. A dentist miner. And then it's got to go over into that skip bucket and up the, up the rails into the dump trailer. That's the slickest thing you guys have going is you, you can load it from underground and it yes. goes, you don't have to touch yeah. it again until it goes into the dump trailer. Yeah, many times before we've had to, you know, handle the buckets, carrying them up. We've, we've come up with different kinds of rigging systems and by far this is the best. Just have it go right in. Yeah. I can't wait to install our track. Yeah. Yeah, having some track in here. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we were talking about putting the super sacks in the dump trailer so it'll dump right into the super sacks. Oh, that's yeah. Fine. That'd be handy. And then you could unload them with an excavator or whatever, forklift. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to go over there to do it. 
Okay, now what? Oh, Dad. I you loved it. Here's the, yeah, here's the working machine. So is this going up or is this going back in the hole? No, it's going out. Are they going out? Yeah. We're just going to get it out of the way. We're trying to get to the vein. Uh, so we're just breaking out uh, some of the waste rock now. So we can get down on the vein a little more. Nice stuff. You want to drill? A nice yeah. Yeah. Okay. Might need to go a little more just to get it on the track. Five, and how many will this skip hold? Ten. Ten. 
Awesome. Yes, sir. Halfway. <laughs> So there's a nice full skip load, ready to go up top and dump in the trailer. Whew, it's fun mining. I love this mining stuff. Here goes our muck. Up to the trailer. Back there. Well, here's our hole. This is what we got out today. About a ton's worth. And there was some really, really nice purple spots down here. Right, right along the footwall here. See how purple that is? And that is where those sulfides have oxidized away. And that is where they were finding some really, really nice gold. Dan panned out some good stuff today, right out of this spot. And we got some really good stuff out of here as well. So now it's all up in the trailer and we're gonna take it down to the mill. All right guys, well I wanted to quiz you a little bit about this hole we made today. Is this kind of something you normally do in your channel? Is this, was this a good day? I know we talked about the purple and how high grade it was. What do you think is gonna come out of this in the mill tomorrow? Tell me your general thoughts here. Well, Jason, this is something we've been wanting to do for a while. We've been stuck building a mill site for a while, and now we're back underground taking bulk samples. And we're confirming some channel samples and drill samples that we have taken over the last few years and sent them off for assay. Now, we want to take some bulk samples and see how close we can get to that target with the milling equipment we have. And this is about the fourth uh, bulk sample like this we've done. And we've been on pause, like you said, for the mill site for, for a while now, so we can finally get back into testing, and we're expecting to see some color on the table for sure, and we're going to try to get a confirmation on how much we're losing on the table versus the assay. Obviously, it's probably going to be something to do with our grinding circuit, but we're still going to give it a whack. Very cool. We've been trying to take a 1,000-pound sample, you know, weigh, it, weigh out our, our sample so we can figure out exactly how much per ton we're getting out of a sample. Now, it seems like you guys just like hard work. Yeah, you guys this, just... is, this is the easy part. <laughs> the, the long days at the mill site trying to get things to work and then breaking down and, and you need parts and you try to order something from another country and it's not coming for months, you know, that, that kind of stuff is what's frustrating. And then when Painful. you finally start running, more things break, and, and this this is this is the easy part. This and gets the frustration out. Yeah. Two days, you know, getting everything prepared, all the equipment, 
worked on and checking the oil and getting all the different things that are wrong with the equipment fired up. And we're only here for a couple hours moving rock, and really all we want to do is just move rock all day. Yeah. And yeah. then on the backside, then we got time to relax and, and run the material for our tests. Yeah. Very cool, guys. Well, I think what you're doing is awesome. Underground mining is kind of a dying art in the state, so I'm, I'm happy to see you're doing it and bringing it back. All right, check out Mine Operator's channel on YouTube. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Well, we're just finishing up for the day. We've got a little over a ton in the dump trailer, we think. Taking up five skip loads. Dan's been here panning, been finding lots of gold. Check out Dan's channel to see the results of his panning stuff, because I did not get that on video, but I hear the results are pretty impressive. And then stay tuned for our next video, where we take this stuff down to the mill, get it processed, and see how much gold we get out of about a ton of rock from this mine. And be sure to check out Mine Operator's channel. Again, I'll leave a link below in the description. So check them out and you can see a lot more of this mine. They've done a whole bunch of work, really interesting stuff. Well, here's our first look at their setup. Got a little vibrating hopper going down into a, it's probably a eight or 10 by 16 jaw crusher there. Old school, but probably still crushes rocks like nobody's business. Falls down here onto this conveyor belt. Feeds up into a crushed ore bin here. Conical crushed ore bin. That's kind of cool. And then another conveyor belt here that meters the material up into a little Stutenroth impact mill. This has plates, stationary plates instead of swinging hammers like ours. It seems to do a good job for them. They run this dry and then out the bottom comes the dry powder and this is a mixing box that mixes the slurry comes down this pipe to feed this, I think they said it was a Silver Springs shaking table. Kind of a cool little setup here. This has riffles standing up off the table. And it probably does a pretty good job of, as a roughing table. And once they get their tailings, coming down this black pipe outside. They have a little tiny dewatering screw and sand auger for their oversize. And then they have a baffle system for their slimes into their water pond where they recirculate their water. It's a nice little setup. They've got a slick little system here where they put it in bags and feed it into the or hopper and then here is the stuff that we mined on our last video and so we're gonna run all this through we've got it weighed out I think we initially weighed it out at 1700 pounds and when I've taken a hundred pound sample I'm gonna take back to my shop and run it through my system but this is our ore today 1600 pounds through the jaw crusher through the hopper jaw crusher into the fine ore bin to the student Roth and then down onto the table. All right, we're back with Chad with Mine Operator and he's gonna run us through the whole mill system you got set up here. All right, so we're gonna run that sample that we took at the mine and we loaded it into bulk bags. We have a little over 1,700 pounds. We're gonna feed our jaw crusher we're gonna crush that down. We'll probably be able to get through this in 15 minutes. Convey it up and store it at our collection point in our, in our bin. Um, at which point we'll shut down the crusher. Then what we'll do is we'll turn on the screen deck, the 25 foot conveyor, and we will feed the Stutenroth mill. Uh, at that point, hopefully we see some gold on the table. All right. Do you have any kind of shooting from the hip estimate on how much the grade is on this stuff. Yeah, we should see three to six grams from this material. From this ton? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So we're looking at maybe somewhere in the 10th to 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ounces a ton, somewhere in there. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, our gold is fine. Uh, I'd say 50% 50 of it is below 200 mesh. Oh, wow. So the rest of it, uh, nothing bigger than 30 mesh. Okay. And we're hoping to see a gold line on the table today. Yes, sir. All right. If the water's not too dirty. Okay. And where do you typically see that when it's running on the table? On this particular table, we'll see a gold line about an inch, inch and a half up from this, this top rib. Okay. And then we'll notice sometimes uh, a small line on our middlings or our beacon. Sure, coming underneath. And then you have a series of splits here and the tailings run out into that sand screw. And what we've noticed with this particular type of ore, we're getting about 50% of our gold uh, in our primaries and the other 50% in the middlings. Okay. At later point, yeah, we'll need to figure out a way to, to leach our middlings, but we could just dry and smelt our primary concentrates right now. And, and right now we're working on trying to cut our concentration ratio on the table uh, from 20 to 1 to 10 to 1. And we're going to see if we can do that today too. Sure, sure. How long did it take you to put this whole mill together? We spent over a year and a half. Uh, putting this together. It's been a concept. It all started with the Stutenroth mill uh, We built a foundation and then eventually the pond so that we could start taking samples and, and running them small samples and Then we just built on it. Uh, we eventually wanted to put a mill together and, and uh, Friends of ours thought well, let's let's put up a steel building and uh, so we ended up working together on Pouring the footings and doing the rest, running the electrical. We even put up a, a, a power pole outside and d hand dug a lot of trenches. Uh -huh. <laughs> so well, we're pretty good at shoveling. Uh, we could have rented a Mini X, but uh, we like to abuse ourselves. You like the hard work. You like the hard work. Well, I have a little bit of experience with setting up mills, and I want to tell you this is pretty impressive. You guys have done a lot of work, a lot of engineering has gone into this. Uh, it's it's quite impressive what you did. Yeah. Can't wait for you to see the system run. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. Let's get it fired up and see some gold. All right, let's do it. All right. What kind of motor is that? It's a 1955 Chevy. Okay. It's the stove bolt. This one's a, this particular one is a 261, so it would have been on like a big, like one or two ton truck. Okay. And it runs the jaw mm -hmm. for your operation. Cool. Uh, all right, let's try it again.
we're done with our first leg of the jaw crusher. Now we got to run this fine ore that we crushed up this conveyor, student rock, and down on the table. I want to see that gold line. So we just took a little scoop out of the acorns, panned it out. There's some gold there. It's actually 
not terribly fine. It's, I mean, it's fine, but it's not face powder. Nice looking gold there. Good, we got some gold. Well, the table's been running pretty consistent. We haven't seen a gold line yet, but we did get a little bit of gold in the pan. So we know there's some values coming off of there. There's the A cons in the green bucket, B cons in the white bucket. There's some oversize coming off there. And they're trying to figure out a good way to get it finer so they can liberate more gold. But hopefully we see a gold line here before the end of the run. That'd be pretty cool. Just finishing up here. Last little bit going up the conveyor belt. And then we'll see what we got in our con. There's the oversized half inch that we'll have to recrush. And we'll get that weighed here and see how much came over and how much it went under the screen into the mill and onto the table. So a little correction here, we started with 1,798 pounds. I took about 100, so we're at about 1,700 pounds total for the run. And now we're gonna weigh the half inch plus and see how much was taken out from that and everything else went through the mill and on the table. So 400. So you'll just recrush that and run it later. Yeah. And these are the final concentrates. They've got the B concentrates here. They've got three buckets of those. Mm -hmm. Two and a half, three. And then the green bucket here is the Acons. And this is all this is all of our Acons for the whole run, right? Yeah. Correct. Yes. Let's so see how much we got in there. Probably about two inches up from, well, maybe an inch from the bottom. Okay. So 10, 20 pounds anyway. Yeah. That's a, that's a big smelt, dude. Yes. Yeah. All right, here's our acons. Probably a little less than we thought originally, but there's still half a pan there. So we'll work on getting this pan down and see how much gold we got. Well, this was a kind of a quick and dirty pan of the acons. But there's a nice little line of gold there. How much do you think is there, Chad? Uh, I would think a gram. Okay. Yeah, about gram, gram and a half maybe. And, you know, for a speed pan, that wasn't too bad. We have a lot of fine gold still attached to the black sands, and that's why we decide to smelt it and recover it all. And okay. we should have about the uh, same amount of volume in the bees or the middlings. Okay. So you're looking for two, two to three grams total. Yeah, if we get three grams, then that confirms an assay we've had recently. Okay. And that's good news. Cool. Know, being able to get that through our system is our goal and find out what our concentration ratio is. Sure. So you're happy with three grams if that, that'll confirm what you got? Confirm what we got for this sample and then it's on to the next sample. Cool. Awesome. Keep looking. Yeah, keep, keep looking, looking for that rich, rich spot. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Well, we're getting her cleaned up here again and one of the other things we were talking about is if we have roughly two to three grams in what we ran, we only ran three, 1,350 pounds, and so that would increase the value of the ore to about four or five grams per ton, which is about what they were getting on their assays, it sounds like. So that would uh, that would have this bulk sample square with what they're getting in their assays, and then they can have a real good idea about what they're gonna go mining here in the future. And we haven't even touched the bees yet. We haven't touched the bees yet, right. The right. primary cons is just primary, Speed pan. Yeah. In this particular deposit, um, the gold is associated with iron and manganese, and so you cannot. It's very hard to pan the two apart. Right. It'll carry it right out the pan. Right. So if I look at this black sand under the microscope, there'll be gold stuck to a lot of it. Okay. 
So there's still quite a bit of value in there other than what we can see yeah. right now in the pan. Definitely going to want to smelt it. Yeah. Or put it into a little mini ball, ball mill jar or something and try to crush it a little bit more. Yeah, get it real fine. But it's more fun to play with fire. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a pretty nice little little result, I think, huh? Yeah. That's, that's not bad for a test. Yeah. It's not bad for a test. Yeah. Very nice. Nicely done. Now that we're all caught up to speed, let's get these buckets weighed and then we'll run them through our system. You gotta take off two pounds, so that one weighs 60 pounds. And the black one weighs 54 for a total of 114 pounds. So today we're gonna start running the six by 10 jaw crusher here. Then we're gonna take the crushed over to the hammer mill and run it through our 16 by 12 hammer mill and down onto the four by eight shaker table to concentrate out the gold. And we sell all this equipment so if you're interested in any more information on the equipment, you can send us an email or check out our website. We've got the table all brushed down and cleaned off. Now we're going to take our number one and number two concentrates here. And we're going to take them back into the shop, pan them out, see how much gold we have. Actually, there was a surprising amount of gold in the table. Uh, so we might have a pretty good showing here. I think mine operator was saying they were expecting somewhere around three grams per ton. But I'm going to get this panned out, see what we got, and then I'll smelt it all down into a button and we can get it weighed. Uh, we'll take a look here at our stuff. This is the number one concentrates. There's actually quite a bit in there for being the number one. But I'm gonna mix them both together, the number one and the number two, and pan them both out. Again, just to look, and then we'll get them smelted down. But this is a good, you know, I can't help myself, essentially. I just, I wanna, I wanna see how much gold there is. I wanna see if there's a big old line in the pan. There's the number two, quite a bit of that as well. So a lot of a lot of heavies in this ore for 114 pounds. And here's what it looks like in a pan. Number one and number two. And take a look, there's some nice gold up here in the corner. There's a few really nice big flakes too. Down here, down here. 
but there's some of the fine stuff we got. And I believe a lot of this stuff, and even when I was underground, it looked like the vein had been really oxidized. So I believe all this black sand stuff is all oxides. I don't see a lot of nice, shiny, bright sulfides. And so that'll really actually make the smelting a whole lot easier because we're just dealing with oxides. We've got about 670 grams. There's probably at least 70 grams of water in there. So there's about 600 grams of cons. Let's mix up some flux. There's 500 grams of soda ash. 250 grams of anhydrous borax and 250 grams of silica sand. I've got our concentrates mixed up. I've added some iron nails here to help reduce any sulfides that can be absorbed by our slag. And I've also added about 33 grams of bismuth in this. It's gonna rain down and act as the collector metal for any of that fine gold we have. This is a number 10 crucible. So let's go put it in our furnace. We'll get it melted down and see what we can come up with. See what we got here. Where our oh here we go. Here's our cone. Slag looks good. I see metal down there at the bottom. So there we go. I'll get it in our furnace in the cupel and turn it into just precious metals. Our furnace is up to temp here. We'll put our bead in our cupel, and we'll check on it in a little while. Let's see what we got here for gold. There's there's a, a bead in there. For 100 pounds, it's not gigantic, but we got something. Well, let's see if we can do this all in one go here. Pull it out of there, cool it off. I guess I gotta dry it off, huh? And then right on the scale. 2.57. Well, let's do some math here. Here's our math. There's our bead. It weighs 0 0.257 grams. 114 pounds is 0 0.057 tons. So we ended up with 4.51 grams per ton. But if we estimate that it's about 80% gold by the color, 4.51 grams times 80% is 3.6 grams per ton, which is almost exactly what we thought it was gonna be. If it was a little bit less at 75% gold, it'd be probably right at about three grams. So that worked out about like they thought it was going to. Well, I wanted to give a big thank you to mine operator for having me down to their mine. A big thank you to Dan Hurd for coming with me on the trip. We had a lot of fun. I had a great time underground and checking out their mill site. So go check out mine operator's channel and Dan Hurd if you haven't already. And I hope you viewers enjoyed it as well. So if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff, check out my channel or subscribe. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.